Everybody, welcome to another installment of Show to V with Mike G, the show of life, the show of Italy, the show of traveling the world for business and learning lots of languages. Today's guest is the owner of Great Grappa, Mr. Luca Fabris. So this is the thing. I know a little bit about brandy. I know a little bit about cognac, armanac, those things that are pretty popular, pretty well understood spirits. But the perception about grappa in the United States is not really a great one. It is fiery, it is burny, and all of the other wonderful adjectives you would use to describe a really, really hot grape distillate. So this conversation with Luca, the feisty Italian man that he is, he's very business savvy. This is a story about how an entrepreneur makes something happen. They see things around them, they see opportunity. And this is Luca paying homage to his hometown. This is him paying homage to his home country. And it was incredible grappa. In fact, it is great Grappa Italiano at 40.3 ABV. It is so light, floral. Man, I don't know. I haven't had a lot of grape distillates that taste this lovely, light, and really, really balanced. And he will be in town yet again, details to come. But I hope you guys really enjoy the story about Grappa, the story about business, the story about Luca growing up in Italy, about his father, all these really wonderful things. So without further ado, Luca Fabris of Great Grappa. Brandy, as you will know, is distilled from wine. Right. Here we do not distill wine, we distill pomace, grape pomace. Right. And in our case, I would say more, we only take the skin of the pomace, which is obviously the best part. Right. All the all flavor, the all the yeah. tannins and everything. Right. They're all in the skin, not yeah. in the seeds and stems. Interesting. Okay. Well, this is good. All right. So I want to finish. Let's make that the, the coup de grace, mm-hmm. the, the finishing piece, and we can talk about your kind of experience here in Texas and everything. But let's sip one of these other ones, if, if you'll Absolutely. sip with me. Uh, please pick the, the first one you would like to taste. You want to sip it? Yeah, yeah. So this is pretty much distilled in the same way in which we distill great. Mm-hmm. But the um, characteristic of this is that instead of being a blend of seven different type of grape pomaces, yeah. it's exclusively made from the Amarone pomace. Okay. okay, Okay. so a single variety. Single yeah. variety grappa. And what is special about the variety that we use is the fact that the Amarone pomace, which comes from Corvina and Rondinella mm. type of varietals, grapes, um, they are actually partially dried before getting pressed for winemaking. How do you dry it? Sun-dried, air-dried? No, they are dried in temperature control room okay. in wooden nests, and they let them there for two to three months. So everything concentrates. The sugar part, yeah. the water part disappear a little bit. The skin's wrinkles and everything concentrates a little bit more. Okay. Is that, how does it smell in that room? Oh, it smells very good. <laughs> I can tell you. Yeah, it smells, that's, that's it smells the thing very that you, grapey. You the know? Very <laughs> grapey, but it, probably very floral, very crisp. Very floral, very fruity. You know, yeah. there, there's a lot of red berries uh, in, into that grape, yeah. too. So it, it smells incredibly good. You this should go. This happens between October and January yeah. in the Valpolicella region, in the re, in a small region nearby Verona where they make the Verona okay. wine. Okay. Yeah. So that's... That's the thing I think that that's the only bad part about radio and podcasts is you can hear it, <laughs> but you sure can't smell it. And you can't smell it and you can't see it either. <laughs> you can't see it either. <laughs> so that's, so this is a single variety as I was saying. And it's, uh, sorry, it's um, uh, obviously it's, it's the aromas which are in there are, are incredible. Yeah. Okay? And uh, this is truly a combination of the grape varietal, the, the um, drying process mm. that concentrates the aromas and the flavors yeah. into their skin. Okay, And then it's the aging process. So we use um, French oak barricasks to age it, age it for, et- for 18 months. Yeah. Technically, this is a reserva, so I spent at least 18 months in barrels. But those barrels are the same which have been used for 
aged the Amarone wine. So oh, okay, okay. it's all a straight line. You know, it's Amarone grape pomas, yeah. Amarone barrels. Totally consistent. Absolutely. So, Similar thread. So you get a lot of the aromas out yeah. of this. And this well, is truly the Ferraris of the Grappa in Italy. Amazing. Okay. Cheers. Ian, thank you so much. <laughs> What is the proof on this guy? The proof is 84%. Perfect. Okay. It's so a little bit, not too much water. I'm always afraid when stuff's 80 proof, right? Just slightly too. Yeah. It's not enough. I need some more punch. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's very good. Yeah. It's very. Uh, Unfortunately, they can't taste it out there, but. <laughs> I know. I th- but part of it is to entice them. <laughs> the one is pick it up, to sip it. But you see all this witness, you know, the, the funny thing about Grappa in general mm. is that every you know ninety five percent of the taste come from the from the skin. Yeah. You know we yeah. don't add anything, and, and the aging for us is like a rounding process, but it's in, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Right here, you can taste a little bit of wood, but the the the, the dominant factor here is the taste of the of the skin. It's perfect kind of marriage stuff. between the wood yeah. and the we don't fruit. toast the wood, and we don't use new barrels because right. otherwise we will get too much out of wood. Sure. Okay. And and you're keeping it consistent because Absolutely. again you the, the wine to the, the pumice. So pumice. here, you know, truly ninety percent of what is in that flavor is coming from the skin of the of the Amarone grape. Oh, very lovely. This is a great way to start the chat. Thank you. And a, I yet to be to Italy, and that's actually a big. You've never been to Italy? Yeah, it's a big big regret of mine. Actually, yeah, we're gonna we're going truly to. regret about it. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, all right, it's fine. Do lead. Have you been to Texas before? <laughs> Yes, uh, this is Damn my it, okay. actually third time in well, Texas. Well, all right. Well, then you beat me this round, <laughs> Luca. But you grew up in, it's a town called Tiene? Right? Tiene, yeah. Tiene. T-H-I-N-E, yes. I had to, I looked it up. In yeah, that's in the province of Vicenza. Vicenza, okay. Which is in between Verona and Padua, in the Veneto region. And Vicenza is actually, you know, the, the province where actually Grappa was born. There's oh, really? a There's a little town called Bassano del Grappa. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Which is allegedly where Grappa was, was born. And uh, actually, our distillery... The original distillery actually comes from there. No kidding. So centuries old, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When, when did Grappa just, this isn't a history lesson, but roughly yeah. how long would you say that it's so been around? So we, ha- we have proof of um, the first time that the, the word Grappa appears on a manuscript is in the 18th century mm. when the Venetian re- Senate, actually, you know that Venice was a republic in mm-hmm. the old time. So... And it was the Venetian Corporation of Distillers who actually set the rules for distillations back in the 18th century. And that's where, you know, they set the rules and that's where the, f- the word grappa appears for the first time. Interesting. What if, if you were to translate the word grappa, what does it mean? So grappa comes from a, an Italian word which is graspo. And graspo technically in Italian means is, is the stem of the grape. Oh, I see. okay. Yeah. Interesting. So that's where it comes from. It ties it all back together. Yes. Makes some sense. Yeah. Well, this is good. I mean, it's really good. So you, as a boy growing up in the Vincenza re- region? Vincenza, right? yeah. Vincenza. Ven- Veneto region and Vincenza province. Province, thank yeah. you. What what kinds of things would you do? Is it, did you grow up in a metropolitan area? Was it urban? Well, no, actually, you know, Vincenza and, and the little town to which, which is Tiene, where I was actually born, um, it, it's not a metropolitan area as yeah. well. It's it, I was I would say quite the opposite. It's a rural area right. of the Veneto region, uh, but it's a very like entrepreneurial area. You know, in my, which way? Well, there are many like entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. They do you know they do the, the craziest things. You know, they <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like what, what's have, a crazy we thing? Have, yeah. like, like we have like uh, ne- ne- next to where I live, there is like. Um, you know the uh, diesel genes, for example. Uh-huh, yes. It's actually it's 10 miles away. Okay? Oh, no kidding. 15 miles away is Dainese, which is one of the firm leading in, in, in sport. Um, attire? Like? Yeah, an attire for, yeah. for motorbikers. No kidding. Yes, Dainese is, is like 10 that's miles away from me. That's where it started. So is that, it? They're all there. They're all like, like the 10 Silicon miles Valley away from of Italy. Absolutely. Yes. That's interesting. It's truly the Silicon Valley of Italy. This yeah. where most, you know. North East is truly really known for being the entrepreneurial side of it. Like, I didn't know that. Then we had like some other more or less, less I would say, uh, Luxottica, which you would not heard of it, right. but is, uh, is the world leader manufacturer of, of sunglasses. No kidding. Like Ray-Ban, they been bought by them. You know, they're all in there. They're all in that, that region. That is so incredible. They're all in that region. So, so as a kid there, were, were your parents and were they also entrepreneurial or where well, did you learn this kind of? No, no, my parents were all, you know, my, my, my mother was a French teacher. Uh-huh. And my father was actually a chartered accountant. Oh, really? And that's where I got the money the, piece, right? All the connections with the entrepreneurs, yeah. because obviously my, my father had a lot of connections with the, 
with those guys. They're not good with money. They're good with ideas. They're so good they with ideas. they need the guy, right? I, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're very good with ideas. And, you know, the Italians are very good with creativity and yeah. ideas. They're not very good as the Americans are in, once they have the idea, the Americans are much better in, in making that idea big. Interesting, yeah. okay. The Italians, though, are the ones who bring the idea. We need the Americans to make them big. <laughs> <laughs> we're bigger like, like with grappa we're you know like with grappa grappa yeah. is the same thing nowadays if you look like tequila is a big thing and right. it's mexican vodka is a big is a huge Russian, thing right. and it's russian gin is a big thing and it was born in london yeah uh ram was a caribbean thing and it's big now all over that's uh, that's grappa the grappa yeah. is italian but it's not big anywhere else outside of italy yet it's inc- yeah it's a, well it takes any real band oh yeah when they make it you yeah, got to make it in the States. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's one of the kind of true, you're right, true indicators of success is kind of blowing up in that market. Yeah. So for you following in your father's footsteps, I imagine, since you know ledgers, you know accounting, was school kind of an emphasis? Well, I, I went to uni, you know, I studied in Verona, yeah. Romeo's and Julieta series, okay. Ah. And <laughs> that's where I did my university. And I actually, when I was doing my uni, I, I wanted to become, I wanted to follow my father's and become a charter accountant. Is, are numbers interesting to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were interesting, absolutely. Yeah. And the... Um, but then, you know, after uni, I say, hey, Dad, you know, before I, I walk into your office, I want to get some experience abroad. Right. And so that what I did is I, I went to London, UK, and I, I went into an investment banking job. Okay. Which you, did you ever think... was for Goldman and then yeah. for your Bank of Canada. And I spent there five years... I was actually doing something which was totally different to what I was actually looking for, which was trading emerging market bonds <laughs> <laughs> and derivatives. Yeah. See, I mean, this is this is an interesting piece. So, yeah. so how was that shift then from what is really rural Tiana, Tiana, yeah, Tiana to, yeah. to to London, to oh, London was, which is a massive, change, oh, it's a right? massive city, it's a, a massive metropolitan area. And, you know, as you, when you're young, 22 years old, you know. That's all you're looking for, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the hustle well, of hustle. London, living on my own, yeah. making my own living. That was like you know five years of fun, you know. And then being a trader in that time, even if you were a young professional, you know, a trading job is something that if you are if you're good, yeah. you can make you know tons of money, especially what, in the old time. What year are we talking roughly when you're in London? I was talking about 2001 to okay. 2005. Oh man, so pretty. So early. still pre-recession, you know, sure. making good money for for a. 22 years old 22 kid. 22 year old kid. Yeah, you making good money. Out of it. Okay. Did you, were you, were you, there wasn't a, a, as much of a cocktail kind of market as there is now, but no. were you interested in food? Were you interested in oh, well, I was, that always been interested in food, you know, as an Italian. You, you have to be, you, don't you? You have to be, right? Yeah. You to, you, you're born with good food, good wine, uh, good grappa in my case. Yeah. You know, so you, you, food is just part of our nature. Right? Of your, yeah. Part of your DNA. Yeah, that's why I suffered there a little bit in London because. <laughs> food uh, is so- <laughs> <laughs> it's not that food. I mean, most of the food sucks in London, but <laughs> yeah. but you still can get very, some very good food. Right, right. But it's incredible. Like what I would like spend five euros in Italy to get it, I would buy fifty euros in London. Right, right? and it's so, never as good. And it's not as good. But there's no. I mean, there's some good English cheddars, but that doesn't. That's yeah. not Parmesan Reggiano. Like it's. But you know, you got something else out of food, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So the vibe, Youngs, you know, and then you know, I was making really good money at that time, uh, being so young. So you know, all sort of entertaining you know sure. was london a can bachelor off, can offer you know, <laughs> all you want right and then after five years i got like of i got bored of trading and i couldn't see myself progressing you know i i, I saw people who had been in that job for right. like 15 20 years and they were still doing exactly the same thing i was doing when i was 25 did, did, could you see it did they wear it on their faces uh yes yeah and you know it's still you know it was a very high paid job mm-hmm. but i was looking for something more than just money mm. so and I, by that time, I already decided that I wouldn't be a charter accountant anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At that time, I, you know, I, I thought, hey, I want to do something on my own. Yeah. I, was, I truly wanted to do something oh, on my own. Something that you own, something yes, that you operate Something yourself. that was my own baby, yeah. you know. But it, you know, I, and then I had many ideas, you know. At some stage, uh, with a buddy of mine, we were also thinking about, you know, op- starting up a... Um, a charter flying company for, oh, for VIP people, you do know. You, but, do, but do you fly? Are you a pilot? Uh, I am an helicopter pilot. Yeah. No kidding! Uh, yeah. oh, see, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're now you're, you're turning s- slowly but surely into James Bond, <laughs> right? <laughs> but anyhow, so I said, okay, let's do an MBA, yeah, uh, and then you know, let's take. I had enough money put aside to you know live through the MBA, yeah. and uh, and you know, let's see what comes up, you know. And I I was hearing that 
London Business School had a very good entrepreneurial practice, mm-hmm. which could have like maybe helped me in developing my own idea. Yeah, but that didn't happen throughout the MBA. What would uh, you know? Because I got many, I, we got into many ideas, but none of those seems to be like viable from a business perspective. Right, right. And I got to spend also six months in Colombia during an exchange program between really? London Business School Do, and also Columbia. doing finance stuff out there. Yeah, or, or absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And but I, you know, it was the MBA for me was a. It was a truly fun and learning experience. Yeah. Um, you know, especially once you you go back to school, once you've been working for five years, yeah. I think you enjoy it even more. Well, yeah. here's a good point. So MBA is an interesting situation because a lot of people just go, they do their undergrad, and then they go into MBA. And Straight. what do they have to talk about? Yeah. Not a goddamn thing. No, not a goddamn thing. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't experienced anything in the yeah. workplace, yeah. right? So to your point, that's exactly what, how it should be. You go and you rough it. You go through some real-world situations some actual business problems yeah, and, and then, then you, you come go back class. to school. Exactly. And you talk <laughs> and that's about very it. Enjoy- the then you talk about it. Yeah. And then right. you enjoy it even more, right? Yeah. And that, but aside from the learning, like the school thing, it was a massive networking yeah. oh, opportunity. That's a good point. Yeah. Is it, a, I imagine it's a very international. Oh, school. yeah. Uh, like we are like more than 80 countries represented in, oh, in my incredible. year. You know, we have people from all over. From, we have people from Kazakhstan, we yeah. have people, Indian, Chinese, all over Europe, you know, Americans. Talk about contacts. Global you know, it's, contact. It's, it's amazing. Incredible. You know, yeah. the, 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 the mingling of cultures and it's, it's just amazing mm-hmm. in London Business School. And so I had that two years and then, you know, um, I didn't know what to do afterwards because I still didn't have that idea, which right. I, you know, was, seems, you seems had some to be s- skills, obviously. good enough. Oh yeah, yeah, good enough to say, hey, let's invest money. And yeah. so what I did, I, I said, okay, let's, let's do, let's jump into consulting. Right. That's a good idea. Yeah, which was, sense. you know, to me was a, a profession which and, and, and a job which would have allowed me to, like, experience other sectors other than finance. Right. And also learn much of the stuff that I didn't learn in my previous trading job. Yeah. Uh, so work, teamwork, you know, practice, you know, whether it was pharmaceutical or fashion or fast-moving consumer goods. Right. You know, I wanted to learn, expand my horizons, okay? And uh, so I got into Bain, and and I spent there nine years until I, you know, I, I became a principal. Really? Yeah, Bain and Company. And I, tr- I I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if I hadn't been for Bain. Uh, because, uh, first of all, with Bain, I traveled the world. Mm. I truly traveled the world. Like, I, I spent, like, two years in China. I spent two years in the U.S. And you like that, though? Oh, yeah, yeah. I traveled, you know, I, I traveled, like... Like a rock star. Like a rock star, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I truly got to, you know, I went all the way to Philippines, Cambodia, amazing, yeah. you know, Vietnam with Bain. And it was a truly amazing experience. And a learning experience, tough job, eh? uh, because you work like truly, you work your, your ass off. You know, you go, you is it, so being, this is an interesting thing, is loving food, loving alcohol, wonderful alcohol, grappa in particular, yeah. right? Did it become difficult to both enjoy life and then work all the time? Well, at some stage you do that. But the thing is, as for any job, if you love what you're doing, like yeah. in, in my case, if you love traveling, then no it's problem. bearable, no yeah. problem. If you hate traveling, then that would be a nightmare. Right. Okay, uh, but it was a tough, you know, at, at, especially at times like when I got to spend two years in Guangzhou, yeah, in China. Oh, wow. That was tough. Okay. That's a, that's a different <laughs> kind of city, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guangzhou, Shanghai, Beijing. You yeah. know, it, it was Shanghai. Tough. I love Shanghai. Even though you know the Bain t- the Bain community is very strong, even in China, we have like three offices. That. Yeah, but still, you know, it's, it's living in China for a European or an American yeah. is tough. Yeah. Dude, I just, you get tired of Chinese food? I just wanted, I, I was there maybe three weeks or something. Uh-huh. And I was like, I got to have just some eggs. This one's a scramble day. Like, just something simple. Like, a piece of lunch meat. Yeah. And I, I love all kinds of food. But that, you're right. It, and it's not even as much about the people. The people are very rich. They're very bi- vibrant and very friendly. Yeah. But it's more about just, you don't have as many options as you do in Europe. Well, you, you actually do. I mean, yeah. th- th- there are so many. I mean, Chinese people eat pretty much everything. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So the thing is, you don't know what you're eating. Yeah. And you see, you, you, it looks like you're always eating the same stuff because it's all spiced up. So right, so right, right. But, you know, the food, I think the food was the last of the problems when I was in China. I yeah. mean, there's a cultural barrier. I mean, they, they're just, you know, it's not that I don't like them. It's yeah. just they're so different it's from, true. from us, you know. It's, so there's a cultural barrier. And then the language plays a role because if you go in Hong Kong, or Shanghai, right, right. Shanghai, they still speak some English, but in, in inner China, yeah, like, one job, no, there's no way, no yeah. way, 
Yeah. No way. It's just, it's just there's a barrier that you know it's it's very hard to. Did, to were you up. learning languages as well? Was that something that kind oh, of interesting? I tried to learn Chinese. I oh, dude, it's so Come hard. Back it's tonal. Years, it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge. Yeah, it's very difficult. Oh, it's tough. I mean, I I know a few sentences, a few words, but uh-huh. you know, it's it's so so tough. You know, yeah, you, they came a knee. They came pronouncing in seven different ways. You know, yeah. it's, it's just. I love it though. At least it's a melodic language. And then they like, it, like the ba- if you want to learn how to read Chinese, oh, forget it. You yeah. had to know a li- that, like just to barely be able to understand something. You need to know more than a thousand symbols. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. I don't. I don't have. I, <laughs> eventually, we'll see. We'll see if I've got the years in me to do that. Anyhow, so, so that was all with Bain, and and actually, one of my my two two years in Bain, I happened to spend them in the U.S. Okay, we're about here. Uh, well, again, it was not just one place. Right. <laughs> of course. How, fo- how foolish of me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I got to spend two years in the U.S. consulting for Bacardi Brown Foreman. No kidding. And Remy Kwan for USA. Yeah, and that's actually where I got to know all this cocktail culture yeah. and the American, the American way of drinking. So what, what year are we talking then when you're kind of working with Brown Foreman and Bacardi? Yeah. What year? Well, we were here for a massive like uh, route to market yeah. um, project for them. Uh, so basically, they hired Bain to review the entire way the distributor footprint in the U.S. Ah, and wow. the way they go to market with distributors, market managers, sales you get, processes, all this. You get a direct conduit to all the insiders. So that's info, where I got right? to know distributors, yeah. uh, the big guys. You know, that's where I basically developed my network in the U.S. Yeah. in this business. That's yeah. amazing. All right, so this is good. All right, we'll use this as a a transitional point. We'll, yeah. Let's try this second. Yeah. Uh, second graphic. This first is so lovely. So this is actually, so, so far what you've been tasting is grappa, 100%. Mm. So again, it's a distillate from the skin of the grape. Now what you're tasting now is going to be an Amaro. Mm. So the Amaro is actually, it's a liquor. It's not a distillate. Mm-hmm. So the base here is alcohol. And then like most of the Amaros, there is an infusion of herbs right. into alcohol. Massive Italian export. Exactly. <laughs> Averna, exactly. Montenegro, Unino, exactly. lovely stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So now all brands differ for the mixture of herbs right. they use. I could spend time like telling you all the 52 no, herbs yeah, yeah. that we use, but I don't. I mean, what makes this truly special is that the infusion of the herbs, instead of occurring in straight alcohol, mm-hmm. happens in the grappa of Amarone. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. on top of the herbs, you get... The, grape. the flavor of the Amarone grape. Yeah. Okay. And then we age this for six months in the same casks in which we aged the grappa That's of amazing. Amarone. So it's a very consistent flavor then. Uh, and then the other thing is in the infusion, we also use some Sicilian orange peel. So when you, at your nose, it's very orangey. Oh, yeah. But then when you drink it, it's more herbal and floral and fruity. Mm. Okay. And the bitterness, you know, we stay there on your palate for a long time because it's, we don't use any artificial aromas. It right. all comes from herbs. It's all natural. And we use burnt sugar versus like the artificial caramel. That's amazing. Okay. Ah. Cheers. 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 Mm. And by the way, this is 34% alcohol, <clears throat> which is much higher than any other bar. Yeah, because you, usually you're talking 20, 20 15, 20, yeah, 20, 20. Wow, that's very yeah. lovely. Yeah. Do you, did your dad drink? Did he enjoy? Oh grappa? yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, every Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Again, how well, foolish! Don't get me wrong. We don't <laughs> drink as much as you Americans. Well, because we're bigger. We got like, <laughs> you can fit more in us. But let me, probably we drink as much wine as you drink spirits. Ah, I see. Okay. okay. So yeah, we're, we're, Italy per se is a much bigger wine country. So it's part. Of, it's part of the culture. But it's, wines and amaros and grappas are, yeah. are are are. I mean, the grappa stands to the Italians. Like tequila stands to Mexican or vodka stands to Russians. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the lifeline. Yeah. Interesting. All and right. So good. This is an amazing way. 30, 34%. Wonderful kick to it. A lot of richness. Yes. This is, see, I like it because you get this still mellow. Yes. Right? Very flavorful, but at 34%, you get a little bit more punch. In yeah. There. Lovely, lovely. And, and it's very persistent. Like most of the other amaros, they disappear straight away mm. because they are caramel based mm-hmm. and they are lighter in alcohol. This stays there, mm. persistency to your palate. And the bottle is very, very elegant for Thank an amaro, which are typically, eh, you know, they're, they're more like artists. They're rustic. Yeah, right? they're more yeah, rustic. They're very also. rustic. This is very classy. Yeah, it is. It's very, very luxurious, which means that you probably learned a thing or two 
working with <laughs> <laughs> Bacardi and Brown Foreman. So, all right, so let's talk about this introduction to people in this hospitality industry. Mm-hmm. How did you finally see maybe in the States the kind of excitement for food and alcohol like you maybe did in Italy? Well, you know, the, the there's definitely um, an emerging like buzz or trend. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, even if I look back 10 years ago when I was coming to the U.S., all this food mania was not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe it was there, but not to the scale sure, to which sure. it's now. And there's definitely more appetite for good food yeah. and less junk food. Uh, there's definitely more appetite for Italian, French, Spanish food. Sure. Um, but more importantly, and this is, I think, a very good sign, there's more appetite for knowledge and education. Absolutely. So the Americans, you know, are starting to, you know, starting to want to know more about mm. what they eat and what they drink. Um, and this thing, I think, is a very good, like, it's, it's, it's a very good sign because, you know, people want to know more. Yeah. And that's why we are here because people n- know very little about grappa and we are s- investing massively in education. So when you, you, you're right. I mean, this is the greatest part. It is because we're being sold that in the States. We'll just say the yeah. States. We're being sold everything all the time so in a way we're kind of putting blinders on and saying you know what i'm gonna go on my own journey and i'm gonna find out for myself yes wikipedia is an amazing resource (laughs) no matter how inaccurate at times but also like pretty good and so yes we want to feel connected to the things we want this personal one-to-one connection much like italy experiences with their food yeah right we we've been so industrialized oh yeah difficult for the states it's a difficult for us yeah, because scale. everything is big like it's big That's scale right, yeah. so you need to get you know you need to get to the masses so you need to build scale yeah. and you need to get the industrial side of it right yeah and you lose a little bit of that like miles connection That's the last right. mile connection with who is actually producing yeah producing your stuff but uh, yeah and you know so going back you know when I was here I experienced all this cocktail cocktail culture and the American drinking and at some stage I saw a bottle of grappa and I said, hey, why is it that vodka is huge? Yeah. Tequila is huge. Pisco at that time was getting huge. Rum is huge. Whiskey mm. is huge. Why is it that grappa, which is, you know, we're, you know, we're a fuck up country, but you know, we <laughs> still have a lot of say when yeah. it comes to eating and drinking. We Absolutely. don't have a national spirit, a national Italian spirit, which is at least as famous as vodka or, right. or right. cognac, if you look at France, right? And, and so I researched is the why and the why and the why. And I was asking people what they were thinking about grappa. Mm. And most of them say, hey, it's ours. It's, it's, right. We don't like it. It's jet fuel. It rots in your guts. Yeah. But I, I already at that time, I knew that there was some much more, you know, refined and upscale grappa in Italy, sure. which was much better than the one that I could find in, in the, the States, U.S. At, yeah. that, at that time. So at that point, you know, still working at Bain, I knock on the doors and visited and researched many distilleries back in Italy until I actually bumped into the Bonolo distillery. Mm. Okay. Yeah, had you known them before? No. Just no. No, well, I... But kn- they're down the street in a way, they, right? They were yeah. pretty close to where I was living. So I, I had heard of them. Sure. But, you know, it, it was not my first, like... N- it was not the first door which I knocked. Right, right. Because at that time, I didn't know much about grappa. Yeah. I, I mean, I knew, you knew, I knew it. it as, a, as an Italian. I know how I was made, you know, the raw material, but I didn't know much about the evolution right. and the distillation process. But I knew there was a much better grappa back in Italy than the ones I could find in the U.S. Sure. So, and, you know, I knock on the doors of several distilleries until I actually knock on the Bonolos family, and they were fantastic with me because they said, hey, this is our distillery. They opened the door. They, yeah. they pretty much... Look uh, around. They look, look at whatever around, you want. And yeah. they were actually... The thing is, they were one of the few, the, one of the few which were actually distilling grappa because nowadays there are thousands of brands, uh-huh. but very few are distillers. Much like tequila. They are bo- most of them are bottlers. Right, so right. they buy the grappa from somebody else, even from us, Yeah, but they don't make it themselves. And Bonolo was actually one of the few I would say very few. You can count them nowadays in, in a hand. Yeah. Okay? Oh, wow. Which actually distilled grappa from start to finish. And so, hey, and I explain, hey, this is what I want to do. You know, can you help me? Yeah. I say, of course, you know, the, the, we, we can help you. You know, let's, let's study a product. They're so, just as excited to share it yes. as you are, right? <laughs> they were the most excited amongst, amongst the distillers. That's amazing. I, so and that's where actually we started to develop what is nowadays called great. Mm. Okay. And it took us about two years. I was always still working at Bain, uh, and I was just going back and forth to the U.S. 
you know, sampling bartenders mm -hmm. on the different type of grade at that right. time we were, we were trying to test until we actually... What kinds of things were variables at that time? What kinds of things were you well, playing around no, there with? There were a few things. First of all, um, the grape varietals, because, you know, like we, in wine, every grape has a different taste profile. Yeah. So we wanted to come up with something which was tasty enough with not too many spikes right. because we wanted to make it as versatile as possible. Okay. So, and on the other side, from a distillation pers perspective, we wanted to have come up with a smooth grappa. So our, like, I always say, hey, we want smoothness with mm -hmm. character. Okay. Right. It has to be smooth. It will never be as smooth as a vodka because our product has a taste. It's got to have some taste. It, it yes. has taste, yes. okay? And we want character. So we want smoothness with character. And this, that was the whole concept behind great, right? Yeah. And... And the smoothness w will bring versatility into the product, and the character will give like will give you a character. You know, this right. is not like a tasteless spirit. It's a grappa, hundred percent. Still gonna be. It's Absolutely. gonna have the Italian personality. So that was like you know the 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 the, the, the wish on one side. Right. So we were testing different type of grape varietals. We wanted to have also a rounded taste profile mm. with little spikes, but we wanted to have the fruity, the floral, the spicy right. in there. So, so when it comes to your perspective on flavor, mm -hmm. how much say or how much influence did you have on how? Oh well, I had as much as they had. Good, okay. But okay. you know, my 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 say was coming from bartenders, right? In the, mainly in the U.S. So we we talked to many bartenders in New York, in California, in yeah. London too. Oh, good. And with some Italian bartenders as well, which been used to grappa much more for a longer period of time sure, than, sure. than the Americans. So, and, and it was like, it was not an easy process. Eh? It was like a two, obviously it was not a full-time well, job, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was like a two-year testing and trials. Well, when you're working with, is it Bonolo? Is that the right? No, yeah. Yeah, Bonolo, yeah. The, the distillery itself. What it, did they say, you've got to put some money into oh, this? Well, or were they time, more flexible? So, at that time, I had a private equity fund. Yeah was ready to invest in, in, in this. Wow. Okay? And so, this at the R&D phase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And and we are actually I was actually the Bonolo since you know at that time was still meant to be um, a supplier yeah so and everything else would would come from the private equity fund right right but then the Bonolo got so like enticed by the idea of of making this big yeah. and, uh, and and they got to know me so that was a little bit of bonding mm -hmm. they said hey why don't we do this together and, and that's really? how I partnered with them really and uh, so now we have it's, this is a co join on brand that's between incredible. myself and um, and the Bonolo family. Yeah. That doesn't happen like that. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? That's a, well, all right. You get part of this brand. I mean, that's pretty seldom that it has that yeah. kind of... It, whiskey maybe is one of the only models that really uh -huh. kind of sees that. So you, you're saying it probably takes working in the field, getting opinions about flavor, kind of injecting your own. So what, two, three years later, you finally have this yeah, free as they. I mean, uh, we we finalized the juice in 2013, okay. and we launched this in last year in 2016. That's incredible. Yeah. How did it feel? That was name. You know, then we had the juice. Then yeah. Now it's so, what's now, the bottle? What's like, the bottle? What's, what's the, the name? Closure, the name. Yeah. You know, the name was like. How long, long that story. take you? Because actually, great as it's spelled, G R A apostrophe I T. Yeah. I mean, you we pronounce it as in great as in the word great. Yeah. But it, uh, originally, it was meant to be like grappa italiana. Ah. Okay. That the apostrophe is a truncation of sure, the word sure. grappa, so it stands for grappa italiana. And then we we play it as in great yeah. here in the U.S., right? Yes. Uh, but the name was like a never-ending process because every name that we came up with was already trademark, so yeah. we couldn't use it. So when it's you actually my wife one night coming up with this name. Is, it, is she is she clever? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's just creative, probably, <laughs> and clever. Yes. So when you get because the the design here is really lovely. Then the bottle, yeah. the bottle came from an old mold which we found. Because green glass is not that's not real. I can think of two brands that really regularly use green glass for a clear spirit. Yeah, yeah. So when you when you when I when you think about the the design here, which is what I'm looking at, I'm going to take a picture here shortly, but. You, there's some insight. You have a, a, a flavor for aesthetic. Is that you? Is well, again, this is a combination. This is truly teamwork. You yeah. know, the 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 bottle comes from an old mold which we found in a alchemical shop in Venice. Okay, that's, okay, that's crazy. And then the the emblem, I guess. The emblem is is actually a winged lion, mm. which is the symbol of Venice. Yeah, it's incredible. Okay, so and then great. 
you know, it was truly teamwork. You know, it, there's in that bottle there is so many there are so many ideas and so many people that contributed to it. Yeah. It's amazing. So it is safe to say though that you found you found the project. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's that's when I said this is the idea. And that's like you know, nine years later. Yeah. Nine years. <laughs> after that's going through nine years of consulting, that's yeah. what I found the idea. But it wouldn't be fair to Bain, you know, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't if it hadn't been for Bain. Because if, I, I got to know the industry, I got to know the US industry in particular. Yeah. How did you like the people in, in this Bain industry? Or, Just or in visiting this the bartender. Yeah, because I, I, I think I know what the answer is, but it's pretty hospitable. Not not unironically, oh, right? Yeah. But it, it, were people very open to talking with you about Grappa? Well, you know, it, it truly depends. I found there are many differences from cities to cities in the U.S. Yeah. Like in the in the East Coast, for example, in New York, where probably, you know, New York is being burned with most of the bad grappa because right. every European and Italians trying to get into the U.S. market, yeah. they first go to New York. Of course. Okay. Um, in our case, we actually started from Miami and we only went to New York two months later. Mm. But you could tell the difference. You know, New York, because of the... New York gets inundated with new products from all over the world, mm -hmm. right? So that was a tough sell. Um, and it is still a tough sell because... You know, it's a does does this does this this wall still on grappa which needs to be breaking right. because they're still they're still used to the old style farmers grappa and actually you know our biggest win is when we get people to sample this yeah and most people when they sample this hey this is not grappa in reality it is grappa and it's just good grappa it's right. different from the old style farmers grappa that most of the Americans would be used to that is the perfect segue yeah. I can't wait let's try this <laughs> and the but on the other side L A or California, or even yeah. Texas, uh, there's much more openness. We, we're used to grapes here. Yes. It's, a, it's wine country, yeah. you know? The, the, um, <clears throat> so here, the openness to new things is much, is bigger, much bigger than, than New York, probably even because they get less new things here right. than they get in New York. Oh, yeah, they, they get first everything yeah. there. Uh, but, for example, in California, there's much more knowledge. Sure. So people are, actually, when we do master classes, I get so many more, more like, interesting questions sure. out of LA or San Francisco than I do in New York or Miami. Well, Miami is probably the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where you live now, right? Yeah. Yes. Ah, so, yeah. so this is great. This is a blend of seven different type of grape varietals. How you so arrived have, at seven, man? I'm, well, seven, you know. <laughs> I, I know. I get, I get it. It's very, botanicals is another thing. What, yeah. How many are too many? How many are too few? Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But seven also happens to be an alchemical number. Really? So in alchemy, seven is a big number. Why okay, is that? We, we, we got to know this later. Yeah. Bef so we came up with seven. Uh -huh. And then we discovered, we attached the brain to alchemy. So actually the, 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 the payoff for, the, for, for great is authentic Italian alchemy. Right. Oh, I like it. And actually seven is actually a very alchemic number. What is it? Tell me why. Uh, well, seven has many meanings, but it means perfections. It means, you know... Seven, seven, seven. Yes. Oh, exactly. that's right. It means yeah. courage, you know, together with the lion. The lion actually has a meaning yes. in alchemy as well. Interesting. Uh, so it's There's a, actually a little bit of Asian reference there, too, <laughs> if you think about it. Yes. Uh, well, eight, eight, seven. Yeah, well, the, the, you know, the most... Um, well, it's the ancient alchemists were actually Arabs or mm. Egyptians, the first ones. And then it, you know, it moved up to, to Venice, yeah. and then from there it spread all around the world. Alchemy. Yeah. Modern alchemy. So it's a modern alchemy. Guy. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Mm. So this is much fruitier, you see. Mm -hmm. Has a backbone. Oh yeah, it does. It, it has does. some yeah. personality. What's the proof on this guy? It's forty-one. Forty-one Perfect. percent. So yeah. still just a little bit pushing it forward. Yeah. I mean, am amazingly fruity, but nice. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't. It doesn't burn like you know. You know and it, that especially to the nose, there is that fruity, white fruit pulp coming out. I get, out. yeah, you get really can like. There's this, you, ever, you know, what candy corn is. Yeah, yeah. I get a candy corn finish, yeah. which is crazy, and that's merely a side taste of the skins. Yeah, absolutely. It all comes from the skin. You know, we do not add any, by law. We're yeah. not allowed to add anything. So it's pure, in pure. a sense. Yeah, yeah. You you can't like the strict. The, the rules are very strict. Mm -hmm. You know, grappa. And that's the other thing, right? It's a protected denomination. Mm. So you can only call it grappa, even though this is not true for the Ameri for the US market because the US market still hasn't like signed the the same piece of bill right, right. which we agreed on in the European Union. But by European standard, you can only call it grappa 
if the grapes have been harvested in Italy, they've been pressed for winemaking in Italy, and the extraction, so the distillation process, of course, with the direct steaming method. Really? The French people, for example, they can make something similar, mm -hmm. but they can't call it grappa because the European law, again, because grappa is a protected denomination, they call yeah. it eau de vie. Okay. Uh, I see. Okay. They don't. They can't call it grappa. So this is kind of really like the, the shining spirit of it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like Absolutely. like like tequila. Like and you mentioned this in yes. rum, but like no, this is protected. This I is protected. I didn't realize so. it was it was oh, so. Absolutely, it's still not the case in the U.S. But yeah. the the, the um, foreign commissions of U.S. affairs are talking to the European Union. You know, there, there are already you know where I think we're making good progress. I think in 12, 18 months, yeah, there will not probably be any more U.S. grappa. That's incredible. That will only be Italian, yeah. That's why well, I think that's the way it should be. Yeah, I mean, it's from that culture, right? Absolutely, it should be. That's what it was born. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, this—I mean, this is this is lovely stuff. This is big, yeah, because yeah. it's, uh, and also you know, unlike vodka, which you can make it pretty much anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and out of pretty much any kind sure. of agricultural product, this is truly you know a unique, protective thing, which can only be made from Italian. Yeah, through skins, and through. I feel connected. Be, yes, absolutely. So, Do you, when you taste these. When you taste this particular grappa, the great grappa, does it take you back? Do these smells ring familiar? Oh yeah, you know I, you know I was born. I'm I, when I was born yeah. back in Tiene, I remember when I was young. I was going into these farmers, you know, houses. Right, right. And in September, October, they were all making grappa. You know, you could smell this. Oh, that's this, amazing. And it was homemade grappa. It was really like harsh. Yeah, it was yeah. tough to drink. But I, I could, I, I still remember the smell. And this take you back in a good way? It takes me back in a good way, absolutely. You, I imagine that it's a nice way to pay back your heritage, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't be doing anything more Italian than this. <laughs> 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 this is truly really Italian. I mean, this is this is the national spirit of Italy. Yeah. Absolutely. And you are the spoke In a way, you've become the spoke Yeah, you know, for we Grappa, are, right? when, I, when, I, when I, I, you know, when I said this to De Bonolo and when I parted with them, hey, you know, don't, expect millions of cases from right. the one you know we need to invest massively if we want to make grappa big not just in the u.s right. but outside of italy and we need to do three things one is we need to have an excellent juice yeah okay which we do have absolutely we are like the distillery is known to be the ferrari of grappa because mm -hmm. okay? there's there's nothing better than that i get it now okay? <laughs> it makes sense uh, so an excellent juice then we need to invest in education mm. okay that's that's big you know, we need to let people know how we make this and why it is good mm. and what makes it different from other spirits. Okay? And the third thing is we need to take this into, into the bartender's hand, right. cocktails, you know, because that's how most of the spirits are drank outside right. of Italy. Even though the younger generation now in Italy are starting to get into the mixology country and they do mix it. But, you know, mm -hmm. if, I, if you look back, none of the categories which I mentioned earlier, vodka, shot spirits drinking back sure. in Russia in post World War II. Right. Tequila is still a shot drinking category today in Mexico. Nobody drinks tequila in, in, in cocktails now. Right, yeah, yeah. The Caribbean with rum, they drink it straight. Mm -hmm. the, the English drink gin, gin straight. straight. Yeah. So none of those categories was born to be in cocktails. So it's cut, grappa, grappa, you know, grappa was never born to be in cocktails. Yeah. It, you need that bartending skills and, and, and you Americans being so knowledgeable on, on cocktails to make this big in the U.S. Yeah. I think so those are my three pillars, you know. Yeah, Juice, I like it. It's education and it's bartending. How do so? And I always go back to this because I think about how my dad feels about some stuff I've done. Right? Uh -huh. I think, well, I started a distillery. That's, that makes some sense, right? But, but but it turns out it's great. He's really happy for yeah. me. You talk. Did you ever bounce ideas off your father too? Like, the, well, my what? father is not here anymore. So I'm oh, so this one, yeah, he passed away in 2011. So, ah. it, but this was. At least shortly underway, wasn't it? No, it was. No, it was truly when I was. I was still like, just so close. Yeah, so yeah. close. Yeah, he didn't get to see this. I'm sure he would really love what. Oh yeah, how much would. you've paid he back. Would. He would. To, to Italy. So all right, so you're doing a Texas tour. That's why we're here. You're here in Austin, kind of sipping. Really, some lovely. Crap. I mean, it's it's changed my perspective on it, and yeah. I suppose that's why you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a good. This yeah, is no, this is good. I mean, and thing. again. You know, the competition for us is a way to to make it into, to let our brands known yeah. across bartenders who, as you know, are the gatekeeper to these mixologies. They're the, they're the tastemakers. The no, taste pun, no pun intended, but they really are. Exactly. 
They're the ones so, that are, and yeah. I'm I'm proud to say that we are the first grappa brand on earth, mm. not just in the US, yeah. to organize a bartending competition. Uh, I saw that. Yeah. And it's big, you know, it's uh for us it's it's really it's truly a major investment. You know, we're not Bacardi, we're not Diageo, we're not right. Brown Foreman. It's it's a small family owned distillery yeah. which is making a huge investment in the US. But um yeah the, the great challenge is five rounds in the US. So we're doing Miami. New York, LA, Austin, and Chicago. That's amazing. Okay. We already done. We're already ho- almost half way through because we've done Miami and New York. Mm-hmm. We are hosting the LA Challenge on April sixteenth, and then sorry, on, on March thirteenth, mm-hmm. and then on April fifteenth, we have the one in Austin. Oh, okay. cool! And um, so bartenders can subscribe online. Yeah. And what will happen is that the all the entries will be judged by a panel of national judges. And we have three outstanding pilots there. We have Julie Rayner from New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have Camper English from San Francisco. Uh-huh, yeah. And then we have Vicenzo Marianella from L.A. And Amazing. all those three guys are scoring uh, all the recipes yeah. which we get in any given city. And in each city, we'll select the top 10 recipes for that particular city. Wow. And those top 10 will get to compete live, in this case, in Austin. That's incredible. And then, what, hap- and then what happens is that out of those 10, there will be three finalists selected for each series. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the five rounds, we'll have 15 finalists, three for each city, and they will compete in a final in Miami on June 21st, 2017. And then, <laughs> and then that's the big piece. I'm, I'm writing this down. I've got my little brackets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the big piece. You know, once you make it to the final in Miami, so if you make it into the top three in Austin, mm. You're going to Miami, and once you're down there, you almost have 50%, 50% chance of making it to Italy because we are awarding seven. Yeah. You know, seven comes up again, seven trips to Italy for 10 days. That's amazing. Okay. It's not just a visit to the distillery, it's a fully fledged trip to Italy. That's we'll go from Milan to Verona, where the Amarone is made. Yeah. We'll go to Venice, we'll go to visit the distillery, Florence, and, and Rome. Are you going to be the maitre d'? Are you going, I'm to, going to be there? <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make to be there for ten days in a row. Yeah, but def- we are we're organizing some events, some classes on Grappa again, and I'll definitely be there for the for the key events. It's amazing. Yeah. How do you like this touring? How do you like doing the classes and facilitating all that? Well, it's actually you know that's that's what connects me back to consulting, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I work enjoy, in a room. I right? enjoy doing that a lot because uh, and again you know. Uh, much of what we are doing in the U.S. is the result of, of me. Yeah. You know, I, all the, I did, I, I came here, I established the company, mm. I, I like, I deposited the first money into a right. bank. I opened up a bank. I did pretty much everything. Yeah, and obviously with the support of the Bonolo family, uh, but they, they are mostly like a financial and a product provider to me. Yeah, but everything else, you know, is is pretty, on, is pretty on my own baby. CEO, yeah. yeah? Yeah, CEO and president, and also, also the hiring. You know, we have five market managers in the U.S. nowadays. That's incredible. And we are the first Grappa brand to have a physical presence and a market presence yeah. in the U.S. And, you know, it goes back to education. You know, those people are here educating people and right. telling not just about our brands. It's about what group, good Grappa is. Is, given that you've moved around so much, you've traveled the world, you've had a lot of opportunities in finance now in the spirits industry, You'll never be through, will you? You'll have to keep <laughs> creating. Well, I, you know, I get bored pretty easily. That's yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but you know, I at least so now I, I found that I need at least five to six years yeah. into a job, especially when I li- and, and I like this particularly more than anything else sure. that I did before. So I don't know if I stayed this for much longer than that. Yeah, and six years. But uh, I can tell you that I enjoy. You know, this is truly my own baby, so I enjoy doing this. And I, the passion that I put behind this is, is greater than with any other job I've done. Because right. it's you. Past. It's because it's me, yeah. You've smelt it, you've tasted yeah. it. You've been the, the one idea to grow came it. for me, you know, and I, I, I truly, you know, I swear a lot to get where I'm at to yeah. be here with this product because it was truly, you know, we, 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 we made it from, from scratch to here. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what it takes. And that is the lovely part of this industry. Yeah starting and getting your hands dirty yeah. and just kind of creating something out of nothing. And I, and I do, I, I get my hands dirty, you know, I go out and sell, I go out and do master classes. Yeah. I, 
I do PowerPoint presentations. I, <laughs> I, I pay bills, you know. I, Good thing you <laughs> had that business training and that consulting background. You know, I right? do like, you know, I, I work on, on Photoshops to do like images to post. I yeah. do pretty much. I do pretty much all stuff. of it. But I, I do it with passion, which I think it makes a lot of a huge difference. I think so too. With like in any job, like if you never be as good in a job as someone who is incredibly passionate uh, in that particular job. They could job. be younger, older, oh, but absolutely. if they've got the And it passion, can be any job. That's right. Any job. From bartending to, you, you can tell if a bartender is not passionate about it. Oh, sure. That you is. can taste it. Yeah, you can taste it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I've got one last question for you, yeah. and I think that, I don't know where we're going to go with this question. And sometimes I can tell, but I have no idea. So you are at your favorite bar in the world, wherever that may be. You're sipping the great grappa, mm -hmm. just in a nice glass. Neat, because that's how I'd sip it. It's really lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm influencing a little bit. You can sit there and have a drink in conversation with anybody, mm -hmm. living or deceased. Mm -hmm. Who would you love to sit there at that bar and drink grappa with? Oh, that's a nice question. <laughs> um... Who would I sip it with? Or shoot it, depending on the personality, I suppose. You know, I as um as strange or no not strange, as simple as it might seem, yeah. but it would be my father. Yeah. Yeah. But that's perfect though. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I truly you know, my father was a big to me it was truly like a, I don't wanna call him a friend, he was truly like um a teacher to me. Yeah. And uh, mentor. A mentor to me, yeah, exactly. That's the right word. And I, um, and I, always, I was telling me all the time, say, I want to do something on my own. I, you know, I don't want to work for, for somebody else. I want to yeah. do something on my own. And I'm truly sorry that he hadn't lived enough, long enough to, to see this come to life. Yeah, I imagine that he's singing the praises from somewhere. Oh yeah, lovely products. And it's just lovely meeting you. I appreciate you taking the time out on such short notice. <laughs> you know, like in Austin. I mean, this is the kinds of things that happens in, in this Well, no, industry, thank, thanks you know? to Pioneer. Thanks to Darren who put this together. Thanks yeah. to Aaron as well. It's and thank you for, for taking the oh, time. Oh, it's, it's absolutely a pleasure. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. And I hope to have you at the competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh. we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll fumble <laughs> through it. But really brilliant stuff. This great is, we're going to say, it's very great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luca. I appreciate it. Cheers. Well, there we have it, Mr. Luca Fabris bringing great grappa. Yes, the double entendre is absolutely intended. He started this company as homage to so many things, but it really is Italy in a bottle, but it is bringing grappa to the States in a very, very accessible way. And honestly, that's how a lot of music breaks. That's how a lot of art and film break. They take something that potentially has a bad rep, not so accessible, a bit esoteric, and they use a vehicle visually, sensory-wise to bring it to the people, and I really think Luke has done a wonderful job with great grappa. He'll also be hosting a master class on grappa here in just a few weeks. Details to come, I'll post a link in the episode, but it is something definitely worth listening to. I don't think a lot of people understand grappa. They have a really strange relationship with it, like gin or like mezcal in some instances, so... It's a very, very interesting opportunity for Grappa in the States, and I hope Luca does a great job. Thanks so much for chatting with me, sir. And thank you for listening to Show to V with Mike G. No matter if you're wondering what Steve Carell is up to next or if Ryan Gosling is actually Photoshopped in real life, please keep dancing.